When talking about migration, many people don't think about snakes, but they should. This time of year, late September through early October, you see a lot of activity from these snakes as they move out of their feeding areas, which in this case of the northern brown snake is primarily wet fields, wetlands, areas along streams, and then move upland to a rocky hillside that gets some sort of southern or southwestern exposure where they will spend the winter and den below the level of freezing. But let's see today um, what we see here in terms of snakes. It's getting warm enough so that we're starting to see more of the today's movement. He's making a dash, a little brown snake making a dash back for cover. You can see this little stripe down the center of the back here, and sometimes this confuses people. They start thinking perhaps this is a garter snake. These brown marks right up on the neck also helped us to identify this as a decays brown snake. You could see how it would be really easy to miss these when you're driving. Most people are probably unaware of how many of these little snakes are on the road surface. Yeah, we got a big one here, a big garter. This is really the first garter that was anywhere close to mature. If you look off to the right here, you see the rocky hillside where the snake was, was going. You see lots of rock. You see what looks almost like old stone walls, but I don't actually think it is. This is a little red belly. This guy's got the reddish brown body. If it's been cold, if it's been a, a really cold night, they need to raise their body temperatures. They're ectotherms, so they have to control their body temperatures by locating themselves so that they can get sun, raise their body temperatures up. They're not really cold-blooded. A lot of people use that term, cold-blooded. The snake's blood would not be cold, except in, in the middle of the winter. Most of the time, their blood would be our temperature. And they would just control that by getting into the sun when they get a little cold, moving out of the sun when they get a little warm, but they maintain a body temperature of warm blood. So as they move across the road, there's lots of sun, and it's a great place to, uh, to spend a little extra time. And as far as they're concerned, this is a ledge. This is a, a rocky opening where they can pick up some heat. And unfortunately for them, um, cars come by and they get killed in the process. Here's another little brown snake, fairly old, small one. But you can see here better the habitat that these snakes are coming out of. And what we're assuming is that this here, in this particular place, is the foraging habitat. This overgrown, wet, you can see the cattails in there. That would be a great place for those snakes to be foraging, looking for earthworms and slugs and insect larvae down on the ground in that wet area and well protected from predators, from aerial predators and from ground predators. And now, as the fall arrives and the cold weather starts to come, moving across this road and moving upland. When we divide it up like this with, with roads or houses, then it makes it difficult for them to move between the habitats that they need. So I've got a collection of things here that I found just over the last 50 yards of road. Got a medium-sized garter, another garter, Another garter, a little brown, decays brown snake, a toad. This actually is the red-bellied snake. There's mortality of snakes, frogs, and other species that happens all over the roads. And we can't realistically prevent all that mortality from happening. But if we do focus on areas where we see large numbers of snakes moving, even if they're relatively common species, or 
we see a few of some of the rarer species. There are ways that we can conserve these species and still have our transportation network, but it's also important for us to be aware of the impact of these roads. With your help, we can locate important crossing areas. Once these areas are known, we need to show our support for the use of underpasses and culverts that will help maintain these populations over time.